So let's start because we have a lot uh, to see. So I will start with the, some presentation. Uh, so my name is uh, Frédéric Descamps. Uh, I am known as Lefret in the MySQL community. So uh, on Twitter, you can find me if you have any question or whatever. So you can find me uh, on at Lefret. So I am MySQL evangelist here in Oracle and I'm using MySQL since a lot of time. So since version 3.21. I'm also a DevOps believer and I'm living in Belgium. And as you can see, I'm born at Pi Day and uh, I have a blog called lefred.be that uh, gives you a lot of information related to MySQL. And because I'm not lying, I want to show you that I'm really born on Pi Day. Uh, so today is my birthday. So let's start with uh, IoT, the Internet of Things. What is it? So the Internet of Things uh, describes a, a network of all physical uh, objects. Uh, like, like this one, a uh, small Raspberry Pi. So things that are embedded with sensors and uh, uh, software on it, and that, uh, ooh, let's say, gather a lot of data. It has a lot of purpose, of course, and it, um, it generates a lot, a lot of data. This is what we're going to play with uh, today. And uh, so this device uh, is a range uh, very from... Uh, uh, ordinary old, old objects to some very uh, stuff, uh, sophisticated industrial tools uh, and a lot of stuff like that. So currently we estimate about 7 billion connected uh, IO devices today and the expert are expecting even more uh, bigger growth to 22 billion by uh, 2025. So it's, it's a lot of data that uh, we need to process and we're gonna see uh, together how, how we can process that data. Of course, uh, you may know MySQL. So MySQL is the most popular open source uh, database um, uh, in the world. So uh, a relational database, but not only, and uh, we're gonna see that also uh, together. And so uh, I will start talking uh, about MySQL and how we're gonna um, store all this data that we collect in MySQL. Also, if you have uh, followed uh, Oracle and the news, you know that there is also MySQL eWave now. So MySQL, it's the most um, open source database and it's developed by Oracle, but also uh, this database, which is relational, so RDBMS, it also can be also used as a NoSQL document store. And now it is also available in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, so OCI and as a managed service, so you don't have to do anything. So all is managed by uh, the MySQL team in OCI. And it has an addition called eWave. So eWave, it's a massively high performance in memory query accelerator for OCI. And it gives you very um, good performance for analytics, but not only. And uh, we're gonna see that for also a mixed workload. So this is MySQL. We're gonna see in details uh, more about that uh, in, a, in a few slides, but this is the base where we're gonna store our data uh, during uh, this session. Then we have a Raspberry Pi. So this is, it has the hardware and the software for one of these IoT object or IoT device. For the, the session, I use a, a very old one, which is a Raspberry Pi model B. Uh, if I check, it was made 2011, right? And, uh, but it's enough for what I want to, uh, to show you to, uh, today. So what I want to demonstrate. And I'm using a DHT22 sensor, very cheap sensor uh, that provides uh, to measure the temperature and the humidity, which is just to uh, gather and generate a lot of data. So this is very easy uh, to deploy and to use. And you don't need to be a big engineer to uh, create this because the assembly is very uh, um, easy. So you have uh, two cables uh, that needs to go to the uh, plus to the ground and the, and the three volt uh, for the power. And then one we sends the data on GPIO uh, four. That's it. Then on this Raspberry Pi where we have Linux installed on it, we need to have uh, other packages uh, that we uh, are going to use today. So I will use Python. I will use also uh, pip, MySQL connector Python. So uh, we're going to see also uh, after that uh, MySQL has a lot of connectors 
And in this case, we're going to use the MySQL connector Python. So when you see MySQL connector Python, MySQL connector um, Java, this means that these connectors are uh, maintained and uh, delivered by um, the, the MySQL team itself, right? And I use another uh, module called uh, Adafruit Python DHT to read the data that comes from that uh, sensor, right? And of course, we're gonna also need to create some, some software ourselves, so, so our own program uh, to manage that. One, to uh, start, stop, and get the status of the, um, of the program we're gonna create. So I will use systemd uh, and the name, it's pydaymetrics here uh, at dot .service. And we have also um, the software itself that will collect the data and send it to MySQL, which is called metrics to mysql.py. All the source of the code, uh, for example, um, for, for these examples are also on GitHub and you will have the link at the end uh, of the slides and during the, the session. So this is the, the software that we're gonna install on our device and, uh, or that we're gonna write ourselves. And we're gonna see uh, after how to, to write and what to write. And so this will be what's in the sensor in this device, but this device will also send data uh, somewhere. And that data will be sent in our case, in OCI, so in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So this is the architecture uh, that we're gonna use. So we have in the inter on the internet devices uh, that you can see uh, here, and they will connect on OCI using the internet gateway to a compute instance where we have MySQL router uh, installed. So MySQL router will retrieve all the data and send it to the to MySQL database service. Because if you have already used um, a MySQL database service, you don't have a public IP for security reason. You need to use VPNs or MySQL router or other solutions uh, to connect to. So here we have a router. This is a very simplified architecture. We can do uh, more, and I will show you uh, that also later to have something even more professional, right? But to start, this is how we're gonna, how we're gonna do. So, uh, and as you saw with DeepWave, we can perform real-time analytics without having to use a, a ETL. So this is also something very important because when we, collect all that data. So we collect data, 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 a large number of data. You, you will see that uh, uh, this can be uh, in 2025, like 20 billions uh, of devices sending data. So that data will be sent to MySQL. You may know that MySQL, it's very good to process all these transactions, but it's not always the fastest with uh, analytics, of course. So we're gonna use Heatwave to do all these analytics. And I will show you example uh, uh, in a few slides also. And something very interesting, it's that Heatwave can do uh, uh, this analytics in real time. But you're gonna see that uh, after. So uh, once you have an Oracle Cloud account, so, and you will, I will also send you in the, in the future slides how to, uh, to do that, right? Uh, or to create and you have and have some credits uh, on uh, on OCI, you will have to create a VCN. So this is the network. Then you need to have a public and a, a private subnet and an internet gateway, security list because security is very important. Then the compute instance where we're going to put the router. You, if you remember uh, the, the small architecture I show you, and a database instance. So you need to deploy all that uh, manually. So if, or if you have that already, uh, it's fine. If you uh, don't know how to deploy that, or if you think it's quite complicated, you can not use uh, Oracle Resource Manager uh, stacks. Stacks are Terraform modules all embedded for you that makes it very easy to deploy something in OCI. And this is what I want to show you right now. So uh, in the, I am, uh, made a stack for you in, uh, in available in GitHub. So GitHub, Lefret, OCI, IoT, uh, MDS. And when you go uh, to GitHub, this is the, the page uh, you see. And you can see there is a button there to uh, deploy to uh, Oracle Cloud. 
So you just need to click there and you reach this screen directly. It opens if you have already an account uh, in, a, in a Oracle Cloud. And if you are already logged in, if not, it will ask you you're logged in, you get this, um, this screen. You need first to accept the terms of use. And when you accept it, you will see all these fields will be pre-filled automatically. So you can see that there is this Oracle Pi Day on OCI uh, with MDS. This is the stack information. Then you, you can give a name for, for this stack or it will generate one for you. It gives you a description. So in this case, that the uh, Oracle uh, Pi Day IoT to OCI with uh, MySQL database service. And then you click next. Next, you have some variables that you need to fill, of course, like what will be the user that has access to MySQL database service as administrator. So in my case, I put admin. Then you need to add a password. Then you have need to give a name to that uh, instance because you may have multiple instances. So by default, it's already pre-filled. You have the name, it's MySQL instance and the server where the, the, the root router will be, it's called IoT server, right? Then uh, you can say that on the IoT server, there is something here that you can uh, click to deploy uh, an MQTT. So uh, this is a, a broker, message broker, a server that uh, we won't use right now, but I already create the Slack for you to use if you want to use a, bro uh, a message broker and send messages, which is the better way to uh, send message from uh, an IoT devices to somewhere, right? But this is a message queue and you can deploy it with the Slack. We won't deploy it right now. After that, here it's very, you can say, oh, I want HA for my MySQL database service or not. You can say, I want to deploy, or I want to deploy E2F cluster directly from now, which we won't do either right now. And then you need, you need to have the shape, the shape for your um, compute instance and the shape for your MySQL database service. Here, you are always recommend because once it's cheaper and two, it uh, allows you to, uh, to evolve it's to use an E-Wave ready shape. So in our case, we're gonna use MySQL E-Wave VM standard E3. So meaning from this shape, I will be able to move to uh, E-Wave later. If I want, I can, I will be able to deploy an E-Wave cluster from this shape. If you are using another shape, you will have to take a backup, restore it on an uh, E-Wave ready shape and then deploy um, uh, your E-Wave cluster. So as I know, because my goal is to show you E-Wave also, I will use the MySQL E-Wave shape here, right? So when done, you can see you have some details that uh, are um, an overview of what uh, uh, will happen. And then you can, say, uh, you can say run, apply and create. Then, uh, a stack job will be created and you can see it will be in a range because it's in progress. And this will deploy all the resources that you need. So the VCN, the subnets, uh, private and um, public, the security uh, uh, list, all that, the, the compute instance and everything will be installed for you, the router, uh, or everything. So when it's done, it becomes green as you can see here and you have some logs and you have all the, the information uh, already uh, deployed. That takes some time, of course. This is some minutes. This is why I don't do it uh, completely uh, live right now. You can see it took uh, about eight minutes uh, to, to do this. So when all it's deployed, you have in the output of the job, some information which are uh, very important. For example, the public IP of the IoT server where the MySQL uh, router is running. So here you have the public IP, as you can see, then the instance of the MySQL database service. And you have also a private key that you can use to connect in SSH to this compute instance, if you want, right? So that's done. If we go in the database systems uh, overview, we can see that our that MySQL instance, it's running, it's green, and we are happy. And if we go in the compute instance, we can see again that it has a public IP that we can use. So now everything is ready. So we have uh, this um, uh, MySQL database uh, system deployed. So now we're gonna work on the data design. 
So schema, tables, collection, how are we gonna store the data from this IoT um, device to uh, MySQL in OCI? First thing, very important, if you remember, I said earlier that MySQL is a relational database, but not only. So with MySQL 8, you can mix relational tables and JSON documents. So SQL plus no SQL equal the MySQL document store. It is very um, possible to mix all that together into MySQL and of course in MySQL 8, and of course in uh, OCI 2. So in MySQL database service. So this uh, document store, it's built on the MySQL JSON data type and of course on the MySQL server. So you don't need to install anything special when you install MySQL server or when you deploy a MySQL database service in OCI, it's already uh, ready to be a document store too. So it provides you schema-less flexibility to store uh, JSON documents, no SQL required. So you can create programs without SQL because when we talk to developers, uh, a lot uh, don't really like uh, SQL. They prefer to use CRUD operations and stuff. And you can do that uh, with uh, MySQL too. Uh, of course, you don't need to define all the possible attributes, just the attributes that uh, you need. And if you want to extend that later, if you add a sensor on the IoT uh, device, it's possible too. Then it uses a new uh, Dev uh, X API, so, uh, which is uh, available on premise and also only in OCI cloud. So if you want to use the X protocol, you have it by default in OCI and other cloud providers uh, don't um, have this, uh, don't support the X protocol uh, most of the time. So you can uh, have uh, all the, the column you want and you can do search on it. And we're gonna see all that uh, together uh, later when we do analytics or we can uh, retrieve that information because this is what we're gonna use today. Then the document, so this document uh, that you store with uh, in JSON can be up to one gigabyte. So not 16 megabytes some, as some others, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, document store provide, but here it's up to one gigabyte. And like I said, you can do modern uh, programming like CRUD operation and something and all that kind of stuff. And you can mix both. So you can mix the relational tables and the no, uh, the no SQL uh, JSON documents together. And it use MySQL. So this is the design that we're gonna use for uh, the uh, IoT uh, device for the Raspberry Pi with the sensor. So we will have a collection called devices. So collection means this is a JSON document that ha will have a name for the device, a short name for the device, the temperature, so the current temperature, and the humidity and its public IP. We could add other stuff if we want, but this is what we have in the collection. Then we will have three relational tables. One is the public IP history. So every time a device will change its IP, is public IP, we're going to store it in a historical data uh, table. Humidity history. So every time we collect humidity from a, a device, we will put that data there. So we will be able to do analytics, collect whatever we want in a, a specific table. And the same for the temperature. So these three on the right are the um, relational tables. And the big one on the left, it's the collection. I put it big one, but in fact, if we check the size later, the history will be much bigger. So let me explain this. So all the real time information. So if you have a dashboard and you want to show the real time of the device, for example, we're gonna read the data from the collection, from all the JSON documents. We have all the latest uh, data there. And if you want to give uh, like an overview of historical data, we're gonna use the uh, history, um, history tables that we create, the relational tables, right? And this is what we're gonna use later in eWave uh, with, uh, and I will show you that we can improve the performance. So now what we're gonna do, uh, we will connect to this MySQL instance, right? So from my machine, I use the public IP of the compute instance where the MySQL router is installed. And I use the port 6448 instead of 3306 or 3306.0 uh, for MySQL 
classic protocol and X protocol. So 6448 will forward to the X protocol on the MDS uh, instance. So as you can see, I'm connecting with my admin user, the I public IP and the port 66, uh, 6448. If I use 6446, I will reach the uh, classic protocol. But here I want to use MySQL document store. So I will connect on the X protocol. So as you can see here, it provides me that information that I'm connected on the X protocol, right? Now, we're going to create our uh, first uh, collection and the schema. So the first thing we do, we do, uh, we create a schema called PyDay and we put that uh, object in an, uh, a name called DB, a variable called DB. If you are not, if you don't know what you are uh, watching on the screen right now, this is MySQL shell. So MySQL shell, it's the new MySQL client uh, for, um, for MySQL. So it uh, replaced the old just MySQL that you have in command line and it provides you JavaScript mode, Python mode, or uh, SQL mode, all the three. It, it provides you uh, classic SQL, but also uh, inf it allows you to do CRUD operations like in JavaScript and in Python. And finally, but we, were gonna, we will not use it here, but it provides you a lot of tools when you want to do upgrades and it provides you for, uh, the possibility to use also the admin API from the shell that allows you to create a different architecture like in ODP cluster and so on. So now we have created th that schema and it's called the DB. Then we're going to create a collection called devices and I will uh, add, attribute that object to the uh, variable called call uh, as you can see uh, here. Right, let me see here. Then we're gonna add one document. So I do code add, and this is a JSON document. So my first Raspberry Pi, this is the big name, a short name I will call Lefred Pi. And for example, one of the attributes, temperature zero. Then if I do call find, I have it. So as you can see, I was able to create a collection to uh, retrieve information from that collection very easily in JSON. All that from the MySQL shell. And this is all the information that you can see here. It's in OCI. Then what we do, uh, we create also uh, the, um, uh, the relational table. So I go back here in uh, SQL mode. So I just do backslash SQL. I use the schema pi day, and then I create my temperature history table, my humidity uh, history uh, table, and my public IP uh, history table. Right, so this is uh, what we do. The device ID is a varchar32 uh, that comes from the collection and we have everything. Now, as I told you, we will have a lot of data. That's the plan. The plan is to retrieve data from many, many devices like this one and get a lot of, a lot of information. So when we want to deal with a lot of amount of data, the, one of the uh, biggest um, problem we have, other than retrieving the data and using the data, sometimes it's also archiving, deleting the data uh, with old records that we don't need anymore, right? So E-Wave has been designed to deal with that huge amount of data, but the MySQL server itself uh, has maybe issue when you need to, for example, archive a lot of data, really, really a lot. So partitioning is a solution because you will be able to say, oh, that partition from that year or that month, I don't need it. And you can delete that partition very quickly. So it is the thing to do. So do it right the first time, plan ahead, don't like uh, here, right? And you need, to, we're gonna create this partition. So what we're gonna do, we will now, remember uh, we have that information here. So we're gonna create, this partition using uh, the date from the timestamp. And we're gonna create several partitions for what was before 2022. And we go there until 2024 and then the max value. So we're gonna create several partitions like that. And of course you can create partition when it's running, no problem on that. You just manage your partition. But at least it's much easier to say, oh, when we are in 2024 and I say, oh, the January 
2022, I don't need it anymore. You can remove that partition very easily, right? So now we are ready with the design of the table. So now what we need for our application, it's a dedicated user to connect from the device to uh, MySQL. So it's a best practice that every application use their own uh, user. Please don't do like I, I see a, a lot that people are using root or the admin and that's it. So we're gonna create uh, one user here to uh, connect, same user on all devices, for example. But as I said, connecting all devices directly to MySQL, when we have a, a small amount, it's okay. But when we have a large amount of devices, then it's better to use um, uh, a message broker uh, like MQTT uh, that I, I, I sh uh, I've set earlier, and then I will show you uh, after. So we're gonna create that user. It's, I call it PyDay. I will identify it uh, by MySQL native password. Why this and not the new uh, um, plugin is just because on small devices like this, depending on the version we have, maybe the, uh, we won't be able to support the, the, new, uh, um, the new encryption and new authentication plugin. So with native password, we are sure that even if we have an old version of Python, it will work. So we use then, we give a select insert update for that user on that database. That's it. So now we're going to start by collecting the data. So from the Raspberry Pi to, the, to MySQL itself. Like I said, I'm using Python. I'm not a big developer of, uh, of Python and stuff, but I, I try uh, my Python. I hope it's much better than my Java. So I did it in Python. And uh, like I said, we need, uh, uh, it's not alpha food, but the food DHT module to read from the sensor. So we import that information. Then we use it like this and we read the, the data from the Adafruit DHT uh, read retry method, very easy. So this is to read the data. We put that data, uh, the humidity and the temperature in two variables and that's it. Then this is all for the sensor, mm, four lines, nothing very uh, complicated. The GPIO4, it's where in which pin I connected the, um, the sensor. Then we need to connect to MySQL, of course. And like I said earlier, we have plenty of, uh, of connectors that are uh, supported and maintained by the MySQL team. Of course, Python, it's one of them. And so we're gonna use um, MySQL connector Python. So to do that, I use MySQL X uh, module. So I do import MySQL X. This is, these are my connect arguments, right? So the public IP, the port, the user, uh, and the, the password. And I use by session equal MySQL X get session and with all my connect arguments and I'm connected to it. And that's it. So to connect to MySQL, we use uh, MySQL connector Python and to read from the module, from the DHT module, we use uh, Adafruit. So now we can, we have everything we need to create our script that will collect all that data. So this is the, the code, it's on GitHub also. So, uh, but at least I wanted to show you here uh, how, it, how it looks like, it's not that big or that important. So we import some modules. We give an ID to, uh, to our uh, Raspberry uh, PI in case we don't provide it as an argument because the plan is to provide the ID uh, of the device di directly as an argument of this script. Then we read from the sensor, uh, we uh, use the sensor, we uh, define it, then we define the connect arguments. And finally, this is what we use to connect. Uh, so we connect uh, and we, we find also the external IP. Like I said, I want to store the public IP. So I use the uh, URL request to get that information. Uh, then I connect to MySQL. And here you can see, I will do a schema session to get the PyD and then I put the temperature history. I define that the variable the temperature history. It's the it's one table. This one is one table. This one is one table. And this one is the collection. And I call it call devices. So this is the initiation of all uh, the, our variables that we need. And then we connect. And then it's a loop because we want to col collect that data all the time. So if there is no session, because for any reason, the, the, the MySQL uh, session was uh, stopped, 
we connect again, and then we read the information so from the sensor. And if the information, if there is some information that uh, we were able to read from the sensor, so like the sensor is not broken, we will uh, find the device. So we use the, the ID so, um, from the device to get that information. And then we check, okay, if the IP, the new IP uh, is the same uh, of the old IP, uh, we know it or not, so we check that. And then we can say, okay, uh, if we don't find it, the, it means that this device was not already created in our collection, we're gonna sleep. That, so nothing very uh, important here. Now it's more fun because we can create an empty JSON document and we're gonna say, okay, the, we search for the humidity and we print it as a nice string. We search for the temperature and we uh, make it a, a nice string too. And then here we do a patch uh, JSON. You will see it's very easy. Uh, so we do uh, patch JSON humidity equal humidity, patch JSON temperature equal uh, temperature. So we just create a JSON document with that information. And after what we do here, we do modify our device. So that are the document in the collection with the latest information. So this is why it has always real time information in the device itself. And after that, we're gonna, we start adding the history information in the, in the um, relational tables. We just insert every time a new document. That's it. So nothing there. And to start this script, what we do, in ETC systemd, this is what we do. We just have a service. We create a Linux service that run the, uh, the Python um, script with the arg argument, it's the ID of the device, and that's it. So if we want to test our script, what we're gonna do? So on the Raspberry Pi, I just do systemct start, ID metrics at and the uh, ID of my device. This is because I choose that to have the same script to be able to run multiple devices uh, if I want. And when it does that, in the background, it will start collecting the data every minute, uh, every second. And on MySQL, we can see, okay, device find. And you can see here, this is the ID of my device here because it's the ID of the document, then the name that we enter earlier together. And here is the humidity that it, it gets from the sensor, the public IP that it gets from the Raspberry Pi, a short name that we enter earlier, the temperature that we get it also from the sensor. And every time we do that, we have a last update. So we know at what time was the last time we communicate with the device. And all that information, it's also in the history. So if we check the history, we can see that we have every second, we have information, it was a yeah, year with the value. It, this is the humidity. So we have the humidity that was entered every time with the value. And we were able to do all this without any single line of SQL yet. All that is using MySQL, X protocol with document store. So it's very, very easy to do. And every developer, even if I see that uh, uh, Kari and Irmo says it's a bit complex, yeah, this is code and uh, IoT, uh, uh, some code needs to be written, but it's, if you, because I'm speaking right now, but if you check the source, you will see, this is very short uh, program, very easy to understand, it's Python. And so we just add records, insert records very easily. So the improvement to make something better, it's to use an MQTT broker. This is what it's recommended. And remember when we do the stack, it was possible to enable that directly and it will install it for you. So instead of all the device connect to uh, MySQL via the router here, they just send messages to uh, an MQTT broker. And then we have a MySQL writer that will collect that consume that information. So we, we have a producer of messages and a consumer of messages. You can use one uh, MQTT uh, directly on a compute instance. This is what you can do with the stack. Or if you uh, have uh, the uh, possibility, you can use OCI streaming service to do that too. But it's more complex to set up maybe uh, for uh, stuff like this. 
but it's very po it's possible and this can scale a lot, right? So this was about our device sending data to uh, MySQL and how to do that. Then we have we let it run and it generate a lot of data. We go with MySQL on steroid, right? So what we're gonna do now? We're gonna analyze the collected data. So let's go some statistics of the metrics we collected so far, right? And uh, I use a query to have all that information about what's the max temperature, the minimum temperature, the average temperature, the max humidity, mini humidity, and the average humidity for a device. As you can see, I have four devices that were connected uh, to uh, MySQL for me. And this is the information. As you can see, max humidity, we have some strange number. It's because I made uh, <laughs> some uh, issues when, when I created it, uh, but it doesn't matter. It's just to have that information here. So you can see, and what you can see here, which is what is very important here, is this number here. So I have only four devices that were running for one day, not even full day. And this took me two seconds to get that information. So it's one, two. For human, two seconds is nothing. For DBA, it's a life. It's, this is long. So let's have a look at the query execution plan for this. And as you don't know, the query execution plan, it's returned by using the explain command uh, in a keyword in, a, in MySQL. And you have also different uh, format. And this is the format tree. So we can see what it does, the cost of the query and everything it needs to do. So it do a table scan. This is the thing we try to avoid as much as possible when we are a DBA. And then group aggregate, index scan, then again here, a lookup, and again, another table scan on a temporary table. So it's a very bad uh, uh, explained plan, but for the data we want to do, it needs to do that. It needs to read all the information to, to retrieve all this aggregate information, like the max, the minimum, and that, uh, that all that kind of stuff. So now let's have a look a, a bit uh, um, more, right? Here, another query again. And uh, you can see here, it took me uh, one dot uh, two seconds, right? So these two queries are the two examples we're gonna use together later. So we have information again for every day. So every day here, every device per day provides what's the total uh, information they retrieve. They receive so the, uh, the total metrics they got from the device and then maximum minimum average of, of all the, um, the sensor uh, values, right? And it took uh, 1.2 seconds. Again, we can see here the uh, query execution plan using temporary table to get that and doing table scans to get that information. So this was fast, not that slow. But for the small amount of information, this was too, uh, uh, not that, not really fast, right? And we expect to have much more data than this. So let's boot uh, this uh, using eTwave. So we have two options to enable uh, eTwave, or we edit the stack we created earlier, or we use the MySQL database services console. So I will show you how to do that. So with the stack, that we create earlier. So we had that job that was running and it was it, it's active, right? We can do edit and we say deploy each wave and uh, save the next, save the changes. And that's it. At the end, uh, we have each wave enabled. If you want to do it with the console without using the Slack, when you have your database, the MySQL database service, you can say, oh, I want, you, you click on the three dots and you can say, at uh, eTwave cluster, or on the details itself, you can say enable eTwave cluster, right? Then you estimate the count, it will estimate for you. So you can say by default, it takes two, this is the minimum, two uh, nodes in the, in the eTwave cluster, but you can say, oh, I want to generate estimate with the data I have, but as you can see, we had very few data so far. 
So it says, okay, it's two because this is the minimum. And you have also uh, some a load command that we need to remember. So you, we copy paste it for later. And we say apply and we let it go. When EatWave is ready, we can see EatWave cluster is enabled. And in MySQL itself, we can see that the cluster status is on and online. So this is what we need. We have cluster running and this is uh, exactly what, what we need, right? Yeah, for the question, I will answer uh, uh, after, please, because uh, I'm alone, but uh, I will answer you live the, the question. I saw Sabino uh, submitted a question. So now we're gonna use uh, the load comment that uh, was printed when we did the um, estimation of the uh, count, and we will load all data to it with. So all the data we need, we will load it to the cluster. So it's just a call like this, and uh, that's it, and it loads it directly here. So it gives you a lot of information and a summary and the load took one second uh, 84. So the total was less than two seconds. So now that we have loaded that data, what do we need to do? So we just do a select, uh, the same select as earlier. So remember I made two examples and you can see now the speed. So we went from two seconds, a bit more to 0 0.1 second, 20 times faster just because we enabled it with and we loaded he'll be back soon give him another minute or two um, if you haven't joined our public workspace, I'll send you the link for you to join so you can also ask questions, see what's coming up, what other events are coming up. Yeah, let me put it in the chat. If you have any questions, please ask in the chat and we have let me see, five more events coming up for today. Yes, Carrie, you can ask the question in the chat and they can answer as well. Sabino, I saw your question. Um, he should be back soon. Um, if not, you can also ask the question in the chat. I'm sure that there are a lot of people will be able to answer that for you as well. Sorry, like I said, uh, it happens that uh, this crash happened. So let me share again the screen. I'm very... Sorry about this. So let's go back where we were. We did that. So we were here, you can see that the query is uh, it's faster, so it's good. And so this is what we were expecting, right? So next to that, uh, we use again the second example, but now with seven days of data, so much more data. And you can see that without Heatwave, this, um, uh, this query took uh, five minutes. Uh, so it's a lot, right? And, uh, uh, if I, sorry, if we do it with each wave, it takes less than one second. So this time it's 421 uh, time faster. More data you have, more you will see the difference when you are using each wave, right? So, and this is with five gigabyte uh, to parse and we need to, to parse everything, right? So let's double that data to have uh, an overview. 
So for example, uh, I will uh, double the data. So now I have 11 gigabytes of data collected. So without Heatwave, it takes 10 minutes. With Heatwave, it takes 1.6 seconds to get the information. You can say, oh yeah, but the rows are different. Of course, because Heatwave, it gives a real-time analytics, meaning that mean, in the meanwhile, we, the, the, the devices were still collecting data, right? So this is why that for your IoT uh, projects, MySQL and Heatwave, it's very good. If you have a very small amount of devices and very small amount of data, MySQL database service is good enough. If you have a lot of data and you plan to parse a huge amount of data, MySQL Heatwave is made for you because then, as you can see, it's much faster, right? So uh, when you need to, to deal with a large amount of data uh, for analytics, right? This is the traditional architecture you have so far. So you have a LTP application that sends data to MySQL. And then you have an OLAP application that needs to get the data from an OLAP uh, database. And in between to provide that information to the OLAP database, we are using a ETL service. And that ETL service, it's run regularly maybe, but it doesn't, it, this is not real time. So the data is not real time when you do analytics. When you are using MySQL Heatwave, no more ETL service is required because the OLTP application, the OLAP application use just MySQL database service. So it's exactly the same. You don't need to change anything in your application, same entry point. And if it has uh, OLTP stuff, it goes directly to InnoDB, which is the RLTP engine. And if it's needed, the query, if, you, if the optimizer can see that the query will be much faster with Heatwave, automatically goes to Heatwave and you don't uh, need to change anything and you get the result much faster. So it's one single database to do OLTP analytics application, right? And with the performance we just saw together. So MySQL Heatwave, it's one solution for everything. So you don't need to run analytics on a different engine and to uh, externalize that data somewhere and somehow. So no need to all that. All it's automated. You send your data to MySQL, you query MySQL for your analytics and it will work, right? So if you want to see if you are using Heatwave, uh, you have uh, a status called rapid query offload count that, for example, for me, in my case, I 17 of my queries were offloaded to Heatwave, right? And when you do the, uh, when you run again the query ex execution plan using explain, you will have using secondary engine rapid, meaning that you are using Heatwave. Heatwave has also uh, machine learning capabilities, right? And uh, it has several autopilot processes uh, that are available directly when you install Heatwave. It's the autopilot encoding and the autopilot placement. So you can, uh, once uh, you have queries and uh, um, you, you do queries and you are using Heatwave, Heatwave will learn on that. And after a while, when you, you get uh, enough information, you can run this autopilot encoding uh, advisor and this autopilot placement advisor, and it will provide you information and queries to change if needed uh, to, uh, to change the encoding or to change the placement, uh, how, how in the cluster they need to be, to make it much faster. So all that is automated by uh, machine learning, right? So this is how we were able to, from IoT, send data to it and to process it. And now let's have a look what we can do uh, with uh, analytics because we are using Heatwave uh, with providers this real-time analytics, right? So what is Oracle Cloud Analytics? I'm not an expert uh, on the analytics cloud uh, platform, but I, was, I, I tried it and it was uh, very easy for me to do it. So it's not that uh, complicated. It provides you a lot of information like uh, uh, visualization, preparation, uh, and all that. And I wanted to show you example with the data we have now uh, uh, done today, right? So we are able to connect, so we can connect to multiple stuff, we then model, create our model, the prepare, explore, experience, collaborate, but we're gonna show this in details. So for connectivity with uh, um, uh, Oracle uh, Analytics Cloud, 
you can connect to many, many, many sources and of course, including MySQL natively. So this is what we're gonna use because our data it's on MySQL EatWave, right? Or you can also do a drag and drop uh, with the file uh, uh, description of where the data is and how to, uh, to do, um, get it, right? After that, so we can, so we create, we create our connection, we use uh, MySQL and uh, this is the data we have created earlier. So this is, uh, we put the uh, public IP of uh, our router if we uh, are not on the same VCN or if we are on the same VCN, we can use the private IP of MySQL database service and we can use, define the port if you are using the router or not. The database is by day, then user and password. And this is the connection. After that, we can uh, do the data uh, modeling and uh, OAC supports multi-table connection or very, uh, custom query interface. So you can remember we, have, we had this uh, relational tables that historically that we created. We can just click and say, use them, or we can create our own query to uh, get information like the, the, the one we did uh, earlier to get all this average summary uh, and stuff with the device name that comes from a collection, for example, all that it's possible, right? So when we have done that, we can create our own data set and use the PyDay connection to, to use it, right? And this is how it looks like uh, when you create it for the first time. And uh, you can say, I want to add the humidity history in my data set. Then I want to add the temperature history in the data set. And you can say, I want to join that data in together. And in our case, we're gonna join it by, by using the device ID that we created in the tables, right? So this is how we do it and that's it. Then uh, this is the information we get when we have uh, joined these two table uh, together. We have the ID, the timestamp, the device ID value, and we have already some kind of graph that we can uh, have some information, right? And something very important when you are using uh, each wave, uh, it's that here you can say, I want the data to be live because each wave it's an analytic engine, but uh, live data. Every time a device send data to MySQL, that the data it's directly sent also to EatWave at the same time. If data is modified, it's modified to EatWave. Like I said earlier, there is no process to sync them and stuff like that. It's all real time. So it works uh, in the Oracle Analytics. You can benefit from that real time. Now, uh, like I said earlier, remember we were using a JSON document to put our, all our devices and the name, for example, it's there. So if you want to retrieve that information and to use it uh, uh, also and to join the, uh, all this table, what you can do with MySQL, it's to create fake columns, so generated columns that you can even index if you want. And here we're gonna create uh, the short name column uh, so it's a, for example, here, the short name, it's a new column that it's a varchar 20 and it goes in the document uh, itself and it is the short name attribute. So if I do a select now, I have the device ID, so in SQL and the short name out of the JSON. They are still in the JSON. They are not materialized. They go there to retrieve that information. But now I can use that information to join everything I want, for example. And this is how I create a list of devices. Oh, not again. Uh, so the list of devices here, and now I can add it to join that data to uh, my analytics. And I can create many queries like we did earlier. So this is the queries we create earlier. And we said, I want it live and it goes directly to, to use them. So thanks to that, we can create a very uh, specific uh, queries uh, for us, for all our stuff. Then we can also have that data preparation, right? So we can generate ourselves what we want. So lowercase, uh, modify the data we retrieve or use uh, machine learning. Machine learning in uh, Oracle um, Analytics Cloud provide us also to, uh, it gives you the, some information to say, oh, 
you can use, for example, uh, I saw you have a date type. You can say, oh, I want to retrieve the, the day of the week, the day of the month and, and stuff like that. It's all, you don't need to do anything. It does it for you uh, with the machine learning processing that uh, happens. And you have also natural language processing to natural language generation. It's also uh, possible uh, with uh, um, Oracle Analytic Cloud. And why do we do all this? It's to create this very nice visualiz visualization uh, that we can have. So we can create summary, drill down and, and so on. And that provides you uh, also the possibility as a developer of creating these analytics uh, um, dashboards to have the, um, the performance. And when you are using it, you can see that it's very, very fast because now it's processing a lot of data. We are now uh, processing uh, millions of rows. So from that, what we can do, we can create this very uh, nice uh, uh, statistics models also. And we can see, we can generate information about how it will, uh, some expectation of what will happen with our devices. But this is more uh, uh, information about how it works, right? And how it, what to do. Other than that, this uh, Oracle Analytics Cloud provides you an uh, export option. So all this nice dashboard we, we did, we can create uh, PowerPoints out of it. We can create uh, PDFs and images, whatever we want. And we can even share them on a, a social network. So with um, Oracle Analytics Cloud, with eWave and, and MySQL, what we can do, we can create this real-time dashboard and all, from all the data we collect from uh, this uh, Internet of Things devices, in our case, the Raspberry Pi, and we can generate stuff like this where we can see what's going on, what will be the trend, and, and so on, and make alarms and whatever we want uh, out of it. So, sorry for the technical issue we had, but as a summary in the journey we had uh, together from IoT device, so from this small device that was sending just temperature and uh, humidity uh, information, we were able to create a real-time dashboard. Oh, this is me, sorry, I typed wrong. So we started from this uh, single uh, Raspberry Pi. We collected a lot of data, really a lot of uh, data, and we were be able to run queries super fast and we're able to run, uh, to make this ready for analytics in real time when we enabled eWave and we get rid of this ETL service. And we were able to see the limitless, but I'm not an expert on that, but uh, uh, there are plenty of nice uh, session about uh, Oracle Analytics Cloud if you are in interested uh, in it. And all this thanks to MySQL eWave, right? So now this is just some slide you have maybe seen already if you have uh, followed the, the Pi Day all the day, but uh, it provided how to uh, get um, a free trial for OCI, right? You, you will have this in the slides. The slides are available or will be available. They're also on my uh, 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 slide share and how you can get some uh, free credits to you need to fill everything. And when it's ready, you are able to use a OCI tenancy. So the free trial, if you're interested, just scan this or go to a bit.ly pay the free trial and you will get information. You can share if you like the R event, please share it on social media. You can join our Slack channels. So we have a, a Odevrel Slack and a MySQL Slack too. So please join and uh, run workload your way on the CI. So there will be Oracle Live soon so also. And please, there is uh, um, like a quiz that you can join to test your PI knowledge because P is the limit. So please join. You will have uh, some fun playing this the quiz uh, with us. And if you have any question, I will have a look right now if there are questions and I see there were some. So is it uh, only available on OCI? Can we run it locally? No. So eWave is currently only available in OCI, right? And uh, you, are, you cannot run it locally. So because this is very, um, to make this uh, very powerful uh, improvement, this is very linked to the hardware and the software and, uh, and stuff like that you have. So currently it's only on OCI. Now, uh, 
yeah, there is. Uh, this is really something special uh, for us. But let's see how it goes, right? So yes, the GitHub links. Here is the. So Brian, I answer you. Uh, would it be easy to connect this data to some sort of notification monitoring service? Yes, now the data, you have it. So for, for example, myself, when, when I play with that, uh, on OCI, uh, so with the, um, the analytics, you can make some uh, option, but if you prefer just to have uh, some uh, other uh, monitoring or notification, for, for my personal usage, I use Sensu, for example, that can read data from uh, MySQL and do whatever you want. But every monitoring systems that can read MySQL can get that information. So you just need to install that monitoring system on the compute instance in OCI, for example, if you want to use uh, OCI, which I recommend you, but it's possible to do it without uh, any issue. It's just MySQL and you just need to read the data uh, uh, from it. So if you have other questions, please don't hesitate. I'm looking at question chat. So the quiz URL, go back to it. So this is the quiz URL. Let me type it here. So don't hesitate to join my colleagues, other sessions to get some information about the quiz. So if you are more interested about Oracle Analytics, uh, you can have here a, a full uh, um, live lab to use MySQL database service with EatWave and uh, Oracle Analytics Cloud. So at the end, it was a bit fast, sorry, because it was uh, very <laughs> quick uh, due to the uh, other issue I had. So I apologize for that, but you know how to reach me. So I'm uh, mostly uh, just go on Twitter, uh, ping Lefret or send me something on Lefret, uh, at Lefret, and I will answer you. And uh, so thank you for watching. I'm thinking we are just in time, just a bit late. So if you don't have any questions, if not, I'm still here, so you can um, ask me some questions. I think there were some questions before my system crashed, but they have disappeared, so I don't see them anymore. So if I didn't reply to your question, just type it again because I don't see it any, anymore. This one. So I, I, I think this uh, session will be recorded. Uh, the, the recording of the session will be uh, shared. But uh, yeah, I hope they will uh, cut when there are some technical issues. But the slides are already available. Uh, that's for sure. And um, so, if that answered your question. Thank you, Debbie. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the session and that uh, you are interested in using uh, MySQL and with EatWave uh, in OCI. And I really, really recommend you to test yourself with your own data. You will be very surprised about how uh, fast uh, uh, it is.
the code on the IoT device on the on, on the Raspberry Pi, it's on this GitHub. And this is the stack to deploy MySQL uh, database uh, instance and the router on the compute instance on OSIA. So thank you, bye-bye.